So the other day I made a poll on Instagram asking you whether you shoot on a bubble on a camera. And I knew that there were a lot of people shooting with a phone, but then I didn't realize that there were so many people shooting with a phone. So I decided to make this one in order to give you a few tips on how you can kickstart and take better photos just using your phone. This they're gonna be with both Android and iOS, it doesn't matter. One thing before we start, and this is about believing that your phone is much more capable than you probably think. And why do I say this? Is because many times people think that you must have huge and expensive in order to take great photos, but this is not the case. You just need to know how to exploit the potential of your smartphone. So without further ado, let's kickstart with the very first tip, and this is about using Lightroom Mobile. Lightroom Mobile is a free app that you can download from Android and iOS that allows you to do a lot of things, including edits. Now, this is obviously from Adobe and is the main app that I use every single time when I want to edit a photo on my mobile. And why do I use it? It's because it allows me to shoot in DNG instead of JPG. What does that mean? Is basically you're shooting a bigger file when you're using DNG. That means that there is more information and therefore you're gonna be able to edit much better. Well, I don't have an iPhone 13 that shoots raw directly. So DNG is basically the same thing as raw and with that one you'll be able to shoot in raw with your smartphone even if it's an older version. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that whenever you're shooting with the built-in camera within Lightroom, then you're gonna have the gallery within Lightroom and not in your camera roll. This is a little bit annoying, but you just need to get used to it and then it's gonna be fine. Super, super important. It will make a huge difference in your photos. Shoot in DNG. And to activate this, you just need to go in the built-in camera Lightroom and then on the top, you'll be able to see JPG or DNG. Just set the slider on DNG. And then the third tip is about activating the grid. Now, once again, you'll be able to activate the grid whether you're using an iOS or an Android. And in iOS, everything that you need to do is that you go in settings and then you look for camera there you go and you're gonna find grid you just need to activate that button and then you'll be able to see that the grid is already set up in your camera and this grid divides your photos your camera let's say virtually in nine different boxes why do you need this is because you can use the rule of thirds in a much more efficient way I made a full video about it so I don't want to waste much time right here but you're gonna find the link down below in the description now we're going for the fourth tip and this is about having a subject one of the main and biggest beginner mistake that I see every single time in the photos that you guys send me or that you guys tag me in is that there is no subject so you're just shooting with no concept with like something that feels like a little bit random so whenever you're shooting a photo try to intentionally understand and point towards a subject and try to frame it correctly using the rule of thirds or whatever other rule you want but you need to have a subject keep in mind where is the subject in my photo? And we're gonna talk about the next tip and this is having the premium subscription on Lightroom. Why do I say this? Is because it's something that is quite cheap but it adds a lot of value when you're editing your photos. Now it's not something that you absolutely need but if you wanna stand out, if you, if you want to make your photos more interesting, unlocking certain premium features within Lightroom Mobile will actually help you a lot while editing. Now I'm not sponsored by Adobe, I don't have any affiliate thing with Adobe so you just need to go on your own app on based on your country and then you see how much it is because I think it varies from countries but it's surely less than like 10 euros or like ten dollars or something like that basically when you're in that room you're gonna have premium features like the healing function which allows to delete certain part of the image that you don't want like some central elements if there is a person you want to delete and then you'll be able to do masking which are local adjustments so basically you'll be able for example to select the sky which is a new feature because it's super cool it detected uh, the sky Sky automatically and then I'll be able to do any kind of adjustments that I want within the masking so, so changing the color the temperature the tint the saturation and so on and so forth plus in the masking option you'll be able to select subject to do local adjustments and so much more this is the probably the feature that you want to use and that you're gonna use most of the times if you have the premium subscription because whenever you're shooting photos of anything that has a subject it's really important that that subject stands out within the photo and what you want to do and I've talked about about this in previous videos as well is that you want to isolate the subject as much as possible without looking too fake so in this case I have this photo and I'm going to create a mask 
with the select subject and Lightroom automatically will detect the subject. What I can do is that I can select the subject itself or select everything else but the subject. So in this case, I'm going to just select the subject then I'm going to drive the exposure up until it's a little bit too bright. So right now it would look fake. But then what I do is that I go in normal light in the overall exposure of the photo and then I drag down everything. Now I see that still is a little bit too bright so I can go back, select the mask and simply drag down the exposure until I'm happy with the result. And then as you can see there is much more distinction between the subject and the overall background because the subject pops up from the image. So I highly suggest using this function. Now before moving on to the next tip I would like to mention that my mobile photography course is now available for everyone for free on Skillshare. You just need to sign up and you'll receive one month complete for free where you can have a look at all my courses without being charged. Then you can cancel before the trial period ends and you won't be charged anything. So definitely have a look. It's a 16 modules course where you're literally going to learn everything you need to take great photos with your phone. All right, back to the video. Then the next thing that you want to do if you want to improve your photos is that you want to delete everything that is not necessary in the picture. And this is also about cleaning the image from unwanted objects. Let me give you an example. In this photo that looks already great, right and even it's unedited just let me just drive up the exposure what kind of elements can be deleted well for example we can remove this rock right here because it's very bright and kind of distract the attention from the viewer or we can also remove this part of the ground that is a little bit too brown and I would like maybe to have grass in there and also these poles that are right here just to clean the image we can do this in different ways first one the easiest one is simply cropping in and the photo so there you go. Now I already removed the majority of the things and the photo looks still great. Or otherwise, I'm gonna use the healing function within the premium subscription on Lightroom. And then I'm just gonna drag my finger on top of that rock and then Lightroom will select a part. Then we can change and simply masking it away. There we go. This is the before and after. And that rock, it disappeared. Clean the image will make your photo much more interesting and much more professional. Then the next tip is about not over editing your photos. And this is another huge mistakes that beginners do every single time when I see that you guys tag me in a photo that you send me photos. These are all over edited. We've talked about this already quite a few times, but keep this as a general rule. Do not move the most important sliders regarding, let's say, details. So texture, contrast, like clarity or dehaze. These are all sliders that can destroy the picture if you move them too far to the right or too far to the left. So try to keep them between 10 and minus 10 or between 20 and minus 20. Then the next step is about using natural light. We all know and if you didn't know I'm gonna tell you that in low light situation there is no phone that actually performs very well. So it's super important that when you're shooting with your phone you're actually gonna use natural light as much light as possible and if you need the photo darker you're just gonna tap and drag down the exposure to have it darker. But have natural lights it's super important but do not stay directly in the sun but stay in the shadow the brightest area possible. Or and this is gonna be the Next tip, one of the biggest, biggest, biggest thing that will improve your photos is actually getting a light. If you have a little bit of budget, you can purchase either Nightlight Forza 60, which is the entry lever of professional lights that I use every single time for my YouTube videos that can be used for portraits, can be used for any type of photography and is super portable. And I take it with me everywhere I go. Now it's about 300 or 400 depending on the country you live in or otherwise you can go with a much cheaper option, getting a ring light. And when I started photography during the lockdown, kind of more serious things, I was just using a ring light. So that's enough as well to improve your photos. And this is about, you know, 20, 30 bucks, whatever. Or you can go even with an Amazon cheap softbox that will improve dramatically the look of your photos, especially, especially if you're doing portrait, but with any type of photography. Now, you really got to trust me here. Invest in lighting and you're going to thank me later. Now, we're going to talk about the next tip and this is about which camera, which lens you're using in your phone to take a photo. This is about 0.5, the white or one pair or two pair, the zoomed in. Well, let me tell you that whenever you're shooting with 
0.5, your quality will decrease. If you have an iPhone 13, maybe it's already okay. But if you have a previous version, the 0.5, the white version is not really good unless you have a very, very bright area. So try to avoid it. And maybe you can use the one pair or if you're doing portrait, the best way is to use the two pair. Why this? Because when you use a long lens, so a two pair in your phone, you're actually gonna have a much natural shape of your face. Otherwise, if you use 0.5, you're gonna have squished face, which is not what you want. So try to play around even with zoomed in, but, but, but do not go over the two pair zoom, the natural zoom of your phone, because otherwise it's gonna be a digital zoom that will just gonna destroy the photo. And if you want to know more tips and if you want to learn how to master mobile photography, you should definitely check out my course. You're gonna have one month for free on Skillshare if you sign up with the link down below. This is not affiliate with Skillshare, but you'll be able to watch all my courses for free within the trial period. And then you can sell any time without being charged. Now, if you have some some spare time you should definitely check out this video where I talk about unusual editing gap. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one. Ciao.